All right, so hi everybody. We have guests. So Sadat Kargin. Kargin. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. And he's going to talk to us about the Turkish language today. Um, yes. So first, Sadat, can you please introduce yourself? Uh, tell us um, what languages you speak and maybe introduce your channel and your language activities. Yeah, of course. Um, I am Sedat Kargin. I come from Turkey and I am 22 years old. Uh, I study law uh, at the Kuzeyli University in Izmir. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm a passionate uh, language learner. Um, I love learning languages. So, and I can speak um, Turkish, Azerbaijani, English, German, and a bit French. Mm. <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'm curious. Um, uh, our because um, I had a friend from uh, from uh, Turkmenistan who told me that yeah. uh, Turkish and uh, Turkmen was were actually quite similar, like language wise. Is it the case with uh, Azeri as well? Or? Yeah, they're literally similar. Uh, the intelligibility level between them is so high, maybe 90%. Oh, mm. okay. So a Turkish speaker can understand an Azerbaijan speaker really easy. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. Uh, that's what it told me as well. Like, uh, mm -hmm. about, yeah, I, I and, suppose uh, they have like local uh, differences, but yeah. Yes, uh, I have a presentation actually. I Great, made a yes. story. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah. So if you make me host, I'm going to present my... Yes, just... Uh, let's see how we do it. Make host. Okay, yeah. should be fine now. And uh, just a second. Can you see it? Yes, yeah, perfect. Great. Yes, and um, let me just, uh, yes, yes. The Turkish language and literature. I'm going to talk about the literature too. Mm -hmm. and okay, of course, great. I'm going to talk about the history of the language and the literature too, because mm -hmm. they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. we go back thousands of years ago. This is the first mm -hmm. area that um, mm. They assume that the Turkish Turkic people appeared first, mm -hmm. uh, Middle Asia, like it goes like three thousand years ago or five thousand years ago. Sorry, yeah. and uh, yeah, Syrians. Um, Syrians are assumed that they are Turks because uh, in some epic poetry, the Syrians are. Uh, so these were the topic, so like this, just a sec, yeah. For instance, Alper Tunga. Alper Tunga is a mythical hero, actually. Uh, he's the leader of Syrians, and it was mentioned in Mahmoud al-Kashgari's Divan al Turk. It's a piece of work which is written in um, like 11th century. Mm -hmm. So, and um, he's sometimes mentioned as a, Khan of Saka. So therefore, uh, they thought that they're Turks, but uh, it's still debated so mm -hmm. far. Mm. No, no uh, tangible evidence are found today. For instance, there's a passage, actually, there's uh, some lines from that epic poetry. Um, okay. You want me to read out loud or? Yeah, please do. Yeah, please. Okay. Alper Tunga öldü mu? Did Alper Tunga die? Is this Ajun Kaldumu? Did poor world remain unheaded? Ödlek Öçin Aldumu? Did the fate time took its revenge in the Yurek Yirtulur? Now the heart is breaking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's another epic poetry, Shu, poet, Shu uh, epics. Also, he's a mythical hero. Also, he was mentioned in also uh, Divan Lugata Turk. And uh, it was an ancient epic belonging to Syrians. And it's Turkish, we call it Saka or Iskit. Okay. Mm. And it's, uh, the, it's about the events between 330 BC or 327 mm. BC. And yeah, 
Now we come back to uh, Middle Asia again. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the first um, uh, state that was established by the Turks. Uh, we call it Asya Hun. Asya means Asia in Turkish. Uh -huh. Hun, okay. uh, means uh, the, the Huns, actually, the Attila mm -hmm. and the other mm -hmm. tribes. Uh, the Hunnu were a tribal confederation. Um, like there were Mongolians, Tunguzic people, and other like tribes. And uh, the, this is the first time they were come together and uh, they consist a confederation. Okay. Mm -hmm. we, got, we got this information from Chinese sources. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it, it's between 300 BC and 200 uh, 1680. Mm -hmm. And Chinese reports, uh, sources report that Modu Chanyu, we call it Metahan or Oz Khan, mm. son of Teoman, Tuman, the supreme leader after 200 BC. It is the first time the uh, like army was established, Turkish uh, Turkic army. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the area where the human empire was established. Mm. Mm. And uh, yeah, the Epic of Modu Chanyu, Oz Khan Destanı. This is uh, what the old, old Turks today is modern Turks and Azerbaijan Turks or Turkmen Turks think that their origins come from this man, Modu Chanyu, Metehan or Oz Khan. So uh, the Epic of Modu Chanyu talks about the power that he has gotten after he killed his father in 2000. Uh, nine, mm -hmm. no, uh, two hundred nine eight uh, BC. Sorry, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and the Uyghur manuscript of the Oz Khan epic is the National Library of Paris. Mm -hmm. That is found right now in Paris. So mm -hmm. okay. you can go. Visit. Yeah, you can go yeah. and visit. Sure, <laughs> sure. Well. Right now it's closed, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And these are the um, like the branches of the tribes actually. Mm. Like yeah. these are O's and O's are separated into two, Bozoks and Uchoks, mm. uh, because okay. he married two different uh, women. Uh -huh. So, and the epic talks about it too. And uh, he has got um, three different sons from one woman and he has another three mm -hmm. sons from another woman. And they have like 24 tribes. Mm. Mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. Uh, are these like, uh, um, is it uh, Uyghur? Uh, are, they, are these Uyghur tribes or like really Turkic? Is there like, like um, there are many Turkic tribes. Mm. Oz is one of them. Mm. Like see. there are mm. Uyghurs, Kyrgyz, and they, they're all called Turkic. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why is Oz Khan is important? Um, is because um, he established the um, like the organized army first time. Mm. I think, yeah. like in Asia, and he organized the whole uh, tribes together and uh, made a confederation. Ah, okay, I see. So, yeah, that's yeah. very that's, yeah, that's important because thing. It's so important. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, six times four, very very neat yeah. <laughs> division. And, and the Huns. Actually, yeah, uh, the Huns, we call it Avrupa Hun. If you remember, we call it Asya Hun. Mm -hmm. mm. No, like Europe. The, Turkish, yeah. the, the Turkish point of view think that they're both the same. They have the same root. They have mm. the same origin. I see. Okay. Yeah. Uh, they went to Europe uh, after, like, the Great Migration. It's, it mm -hmm. happened, like, uh, 375 A.D. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the Huns likely entered Europe shortly before, like 370 from Central Asia. So, um, therefore, there is an uh, Attila epic. You know, the Attila is the great commander of the Huns. Yeah. 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 yeah which caused the uh, fall of Roman Empire and so. Mm -hmm. So, this epic talks about uh, Attila and his uh, conquest of Europe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah, then we come back again to Middle Asia. This is the first Turkic Khanate. Mm. Uh, we call it Birinci Göktürkler. 
Gök Türk means actually blue Turks. Gök means actually um, sky, and the sky is blue. Yeah. And Gök Türk means um, blue Turks, actually. Mm. Yeah, that's and, a term I've, I've heard before, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm. The first Turkic Khanate was a kind of established by the Ashina clan. I said uh, there were different clans of Turkic people. Ashina, mm -hmm. one of them, is one of them. And they established the uh, first Turkic Khanate. And this is the area where they like, mm -hmm. were established. Mm -hmm. And they have, uh, you know, the oral poetry all the time. Mm -hmm. There's no written uh, thing so far. We're mm -hmm. going to see after this. Um, another epic of Ergenekon. This is another epic, which is told by shamans. You know, um, their religion actually plays a great role in here because... Mm -hmm. um, they believed in uh, Gök Tengri. Uh, this is the god, which is found in, uh, like in sky. Mm. So there were performers of this religion, which are called shamans. They always mm. tell these epics orally. Mm -hmm. So it, it's uh, transmitted from generations to generations, like verbally. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. The epic of the Ergenekon um, is the like uh it explains the foundation of the first turkey carnate uh like uh, they were defeated by chinese i guess so th they had to retreat and they had to hide so they uh they got their strength back so mm. there was a another there was a wolf which led mm. them to the uh to the fight against the chinese people mm. so it mm. talks about well, briefly that and yeah i i, I think uh, the wolf is a big symbol in turkey isn't it it's a national yeah. symbol yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a mm. national symbol. actually um i wish i put the um uh, the uh, flag of the first turkey carnate it's mm -hmm. uh, a wolf um in in green mm -hmm. with a blue screen mm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I'll go yeah, all that. that. <laughs> I'm interested. The wolf, the wolf is, yeah. is very important for the Turks. Yeah. Uh, and dog is very important for the Mongols, I guess. Mm. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. And also they commemorate all the time the this uh, escape from Ergenekon. Mm -hmm. Ergenekon is a, uh, a place uh, which is full of like uh, mountains. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, must have been and difficult. This, uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, this is the second Turkic Khanate. Um, and it was again established by the Ashina clan of Göktürk. The first ones were defeated by Chinese people and they were captured by Chinese, but then they escaped and they established this state again. Mm. Uh -huh. yeah. mm. And now we see the first time the written inscriptions in here. Mm. Ah, yes. Yeah. This uh, dear, uh, this is Chor inscription. Like mm. this is the oldest inscription in Turkish today, in Turkic actually. Mm. Um, like uh, it's a tombstone, but it's not that literal, you know. Um, we're going to see something else here. Yeah, this is the Chor inscription. Uh -huh. mm. Those are the writings like with old alphabet, which is called runic alphabet mm. or Göktürk alphabet. It's a tombstone. Uh, it is called in Old Turkic Kurgan. Okay. And we go. And we have Orhon inscriptions. The, this is uh, the one which is uh, full of many information. Um, th they were erected by the Göktürk's uh, second uh, Turkic Khanate in the early 8th century. Like they commemorate the brothers Bilge Khan and Kültegin. Mm. Uh, one a politician and the other a military commander. Bilge Khan means vice uh, leader. Bilge mm -hmm. means vice. Yeah. So, and uh, Kültegin, actually it's uh, debated the name. Uh, some thought that it's Göltegin. Göl means lake because uh, the, the natural things are very important for Turks, for instance, lakes, mountains, and uh, valleys. 
they are very important for Turks because they were nomads. Mm-hmm. And civilization. So, yeah, uh, it's probably Göl or Kül. It's uh, still today debated. And um, yeah, um, yeah, this is where Orhon inscriptions are found today mm-hmm. in Mongolia. If you want to see, you have to go to Mongolia. Mm. Yeah. yeah, next time. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, there were mm. like um, three or four inscriptions. This is uh, one of them. This is mm. Kültigin inscription. These are the um, old Turkic writings with runic alphabet. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm. this is Tonyukuk inscription. Tony Cook was the like like a prime minister of them at that time. <laughs> mm. All right. I see. Um, in terms and, of, uh, oh, sorry to to cut yeah. you off, but like those uh, runes, actually, they came over time. Where like does anyone is there a consensus on where the roots of those runes could be, or it's uh, like uh, yeah, we know today. We know today yeah. uh, whom it belongs to. It belongs to Turkic tribes. Mm. It was erected by Bilge Khan. Bilge mm. Khan wanted to just uh, address Turkic people mm. because uh, they had really hard time before that. They were defeated mm. by Chinese. So they wanted to turn. So he says basically uh, in those inscriptions, like mm. you shouldn't be deceived by Chinese. They're going to give mm. you presents. They're going to mm. give you their like princesses. Mm, so you shouldn't be deceived by that. He says basically, yeah. and he says yeah. like, uh, I'm gonna show some inscriptions from that thing too. Mm. And, okay. um, for instance, uh, that was a translation from that thing. Like I brought to dying people back to life. For the naked people, I found clothing. The poor people, I make rich. The scant mm. people, I make numerous. I make the other rich as a kingdom, a Khan, to stand higher. All mm. the people in the four quarters of the world I brought to keep in the peace and making the end of hostilities. They all obeyed me and served me. And, mm. um, you know, uh, this belongs to Turkic people because there is a word, Turkic, Turkic mm. written mm-hmm. in Orhun alphabet, written yeah. root alphabet, mm. written with these letters, ah, like Turkic. Yeah. 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 Mm. You see, these are the letters. There are uh, like uh, 38 letters, 38 letters, four of them vowels, you see here. Mm-hmm. And the 34 of them are um, like- uh, mm. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you see this, this, this letter looks like bow, right? Yeah. Yeah. And bow means in Turkey, yay, yay. Mm-hmm. It gives Y sound. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so they're based yeah. on the objects. Based, right? mm. Yeah, the objects. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. This, okay. This, this this letter looks like arrow, right? Mm-hmm. Mm. And arrow in Turkic, ok. And you see, this represents ok. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And we come right now to Bulgars. Mm-hmm. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Because yeah. it can be confused with the Bulgarians. It's something yes. quite yeah. different. Yeah, yeah, of course. Mm. People confuse them. It's a yeah. different uh, tribe. The Bulgars were Turkic semi nomadic warrior tribes that flourished in the Pontic Caspian steppe. I'm going to show in a uh, map. So mm. the Bulgars spoke a Turkic language. Uh, it was like Uyghuric branch. And the o- o- no, o- no, Ogur languages, yeah. Ogur languages are a distinct group of the Turkic languages. Mm-hmm. Mm. Today, they are represented only by Chuash language. So mm-hmm. I'm gonna show you, yeah. Yeah. This is, yeah, this is the time actually between like uh, 700s or something like that after the, the birth of Jesus. So this is Western Gökter Khanate. This is Bulgars where they live, actually. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Today, where the Chuash live, actually here in Russia. So they're only representatives. Mm-hmm. There are Hazar Turks, Huns, like the Avar Khanate. Yeah. 
And the classification of the Turkic languages, I'm going to just uh, talk about a little, then I'm okay. going to turn back to uh, the literature of the Turkish language. Okay. Uh, the Turkic okay. languages may be divided into six branches. And by the way, this is this taxation belongs to uh, this uh, Turkologist Lars Johansson. Uh, I thought this is the most logical one, so I picked mm -hmm. that one mm. to okay. talk about it. <clears throat> and uh, they were like um, <clears throat> in two six branches. Yeah. Firstly, mm. common Shes Turkic. This is Eastern Turkic, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Lir Turkic. It's Western Turkic. Mm. Okay. This is the first time. This is the first time a tribe like separated from a, a language actually separated from old Turkic and mm. become Ogur Turkic today. Mm -hmm. mm. And these five are really closely related to each other okay. till the, to this day. So, yeah, we see Bulgars, like, and we come yet, uh, we come now Uyghur Khanate. The mm. Uyghurs and Ogurs are different. Ah, these okay. are Bulgars, are Ogur, <laughs> but mm. Uyghurs are in Middle Asia. They're in Crimean uh, area, but their Uyghurs are in uh, Asia. Mm, so I see. Okay. Uyghurs come from uh, after um, the second Gökdürk Khanate. They were like uh, they were destroyed by Uyghurs. Okay. Mm. You know, the Turkic tribes uh, fight each other too. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Other yeah. Tribes also each other too. So mm. the Uyghurs like destroyed the second go to Khanate and they established their own country. And this is the first Turkish tribe that actually are not nomads anymore. They are settled uh -huh. mm. because they accept um, a new religion, which is called Maniheism mm -hmm. because it forbids to eat meat. So they have mm. to settle and they have to mm -hmm. farm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. yeah, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And after that, they started to write because they were settled. Mm -hmm. So they're not nomads anymore. They can write and they can um, like translate things. And we're going to see their piece of works. Mm. Okay. For instance, they have epics too, Uyghurs, like Tureish Destana. It means multiply and appear. Mm. Göch, it means migration. And Mani Dininin Kabuli, it means the acceptance of the Maniheism, the religion they accepted. Before they, before mm -hmm. that, they believed in the um, Gök Tengri religion, mm -hmm. like the old Turkic yeah. ones. But mm -hmm. they now yeah. changed it. Yeah. I see. And they have an, another alphabet other than tur uh, old Turkic alphabet, or uh -huh. alphabet. Oh. They have Uyghur alphabet. Okay. This is the Uyghur oh, yeah, alphabet. Quite different. Mm. Yeah, quite different. Yeah, like the initial ones, and this is the last ones. Uh -huh. This is the Latin version. Yeah, and the pieces of Uyghurs. Yeah, Urk bitik, altın yaruk, sekiz yükmek, kal yaram kara ve papam kara. These are the pieces. Urk bitik, Urk means uh, like. Uh, Divination, it's like a fortune telling. Mm -hmm. mm. It, it means book, actually, in old Turkic. It means book. Mm -hmm. mm. It's like a, a book of fortune telling. Yeah. Mm. And uh, this is written in, uh, they didn't use their alphabet, they used Orhun alphabet and they used Chinese. Mm -hmm. So mm. they have both texts. And we have. The golden, the golden light stra, mm. and the golden light stra also known by the old Uyghur title Altun Yaruk. It's a Buddhist text of the Malayana branch of Buddhism. They also mm. accepted Buddhism too, like not all of them, but maybe partial of them because mm -hmm. uh, they were like uh, affected by the Chinese people because they are settled now. They are not nomads. Mm. They have to always interact with Chinese people. Mm -hmm. mm, I see. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is Altin Yaruk. Yeah. Mm. And Yükmek. It's also work written with the aim of introducing and adapting and spreading the Buddhism. Like among the Uyghurs. 
Mm. Yes. This is the first, like the old Turkic uh, area. Yes. Now we yeah. come to Middle Turkic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And in Middle Turkic, two states play great roles. Karahanit Kanet, yani uh, Karahanlar. And this is the area where they occupied. And they have an epic, Satuk Burahan. Mm. And I said, like, the religions play great roles on the languages. And mm -hmm. uh, they accepted Islam for, for the first time. Mm -hmm. Actually, they met uh, first time uh, with Arabs. They uh, met Islam in 751 with the War of Talas. Mm -hmm. They met Islam and they started to convert to Islam slowly. Mm -hmm. But... When a sultan, when a Han converts to another language, the whole tribes follow them. Mm -hmm. so it's very important. So the epic of Saltuk Burahan, um, it's very important for the Karahanids mm -hmm. because Abdul Karim Saltuk Burahan was the Karahan Khan in 1934. Mm -hmm. He was one of the first Turkic rulers to convert to Islam, mm -hmm. which prompted his Karahanid subjects to convert mm. yeah i see there is uh like some influence on the on the at least on his first name like uh abdul karim yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. Sure. Mm. when they convert yeah. to islam they get mm. uh, an arabic name yeah abdul yeah. karim for Islam. Mm. Yeah. Mm, i see yeah and there's another um state Ghaznavids. and also we see the uh like how the Turks come from Middle Asia towards Anatolia and mm. Europe yeah. or Iran and Middle, a Middle East mm -hmm. and the Ghaznavids where they occupy and they're very important because when they convert to Islam uh, they started to get uh, some words from Persian and Arabic mm -hmm. yeah. this is the first time they got from uh, they got uh, like long words from Arabic and um, Persian so okay. And there are four pieces of works in this er era. Like they play a great role. Uh, these are like Kutat Gubilik. This is the first one. And this, the Kutat Gubilik is an 11th century work written by Yusuf Has Hajib. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kutat Gubilik is written in Karluk language. The Karluk language, actually, the language that Karahan Khanate was speaking. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. And. Uh, and in addition to the Turk base, has a large influx of Persian and Arabic vocabulary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is Kutad Gubilik. You mm. see the, and also they use Arabic alphabet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> that's the only thing that I knew uh, historically that, uh, yeah, the, um, at least the, the Ottoman Empire was using uh, like the Arabic alphabet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'll come to yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. okay, then, yeah. And this is the second one. And I think this is the most important one among them. Divan mm. Lugat Turk. And uh, it's written by Mahmoud Kashgari. And uh, he was a, a Khanate too, a Khan hate too. And uh, he, who extensively studied the Turk languages of this time. He's a linguist, actually. And he lived in 11th century. Mm. Uh, because at that time, Arabic was like trendy language. They said like, it's like um, really superior to Turkic languages. Mm -hmm. So he said, no, it's just, a, it's just a one of the languages uh, of human beings. So I have to like uh, prepare a dictionary like mm -hmm. to improve that Turkic languages are worthy, as worthy as Arabic language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why do they think that Arabic is so sacred? Because, because of Islam, you know? Mm -hmm. They say it's sacred, it's a language of the God. He sent those scripts from like mm -hmm. the sky. So it's sacred. So, yeah. And it gives us many information about the Turkic migration and expansion of the Turkic tribes and Turkic languages into Central Asia, Eastern Europe and West Asia. And mainly between 6th and 11th century. And uh, the region of the origin of the Turkish people is suggested to be somewhere in Siberia and Mongolia, as I showed before, like mm -hmm. in office, you know, culture. So, and yeah. 
And also there is a map uh, behind the book of Divan Lugar to Turk. Mm -hmm. And it also shows Japan at that time it, mm -hmm. as Jabarka. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you like, this is the, yeah, this is the map of Divan Lugar to Turk. Mm -hmm. This is written in Arabic letters, of course, at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. And of course, uh, the manuscript is 638 pages and contains a very detailed Arabic explanation of about 900 Tur Turkic words and sentences. Mm -hmm. And also includes a brief foreword of information interspread the text regarding to the history of the Turks, their geographical spread and their height, dialects and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it gives us many information about the Turkic tribes and yeah. So, you know, it was like lost till a hundred years ago. Uh, it was found by someone called Ali, uh, Ali yeah. Uh, he, he read uh, in, in somewhere that there's one Ligati Turk in, mm. in a bibliography of um, Keshvi Zunun, which was written by uh, Katip Çelebi. It's an Ottoman scholar. He mentioned about the one Lugati Turk, but they didn't know where it was. So mm -hmm. he went to a bookstore and then he discovers that's the one Lugati Turk. Mm. Uh -huh. So he mm -hmm. wants to buy it and then he buys it. Then uh, we have the copy of this today. Mm. Yeah. I see. <laughs> and there is another like piece of work at the threshold of the Truths, Atavitul Hakaik, and also uh, this is written in Karahanit language. Mm. And, yeah. and it has the poems in it. <laughs> it was written by Edip Ahmed Yukneki. Mm. And the last one is Divan Hikmet, the book that includes the oldest known examples of Turkish Sufism in literature, which brings together the poems called Hikmet. In the book, the information about Yesevism, Yesevism Ahmed Yesevi is the writer of this book, mm. and uh, he's known as the, the Hoja that taught Turkish people Islam. So mm. uh, he talks about the life and the miracles of the Islamic prophet, like Prophet Muhammad. So, yeah. Mm. Therefore, there are many Arabic and Persian words. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Now we come to Great Seljuk Empire. Yeah, uh, mm. you see, there's two wars. There are two wars mm. here. Mm -hmm. like, mm. They fight Ghaznavids, and so they were established in 140. And then they they rush forward to Turkey, actually. Today, mm. yeah. in mm. 2000, in uh, 171, they mm -hmm. um, they fight against Byzantine Empire, the East Roman Empire. So they beat them. So after they they've beaten Byzantine Empire, they started to like flow through Anatolia, the whole Turkic tribes, mm. mainly all August Turkic tribes. Mm. The August, like today, the ancestry of the modern Turkics, uh -huh. Turkey, mm. Turkish people, and That's Azerbaijan it. people. Yeah, mm. and. The common languages in Seljuk, the Great Seljuk Empire are Persian, August Turkic, and Arabic. Persian was used literature and lingua franca. Mm -hmm. I see. It's like the written language. August Turkic, dynastic, because it was ruled by Turkic people. Mm -hmm. And military, of course, military was uh, like consist of Turkic people. Mm -hmm. And Arabic, mm -hmm. theology, Law and science. Um, was it like in France where, like, initially military was really for, like, let's say, nobles? Yeah, that's so I imagine. Yeah, like, yeah. like for nobility, where, like, uh, August Turkic, like, like nobility, or is it like not not the same? Uh, no, the same actually, you know what? Uh, they were really literally affected by Persian. Mm. Yeah, that, like mm. Persian was the like the important language at that time. Mm. Ah, I see. Mm. Yeah, therefore, there are many Persian words in Turkish language today. Mm. Mm. I see. I see. Yeah, but mm. always the military, always Turkic people. Yeah, mm. because mm. like Turks wants to fight, 
loves to fight. I don't know, like because of their like, because of their history, mm. and yeah. And here comes the Rum Selçuk Sultanate, Anadolu Selçuklu Devleti. Mm. Like this is a actually this was a branch of the great Selçuk Empire, but uh, it started to fall down, fall apart. So mm. they established a new state, just um, restricted by Anatolia, within the Anatolia area. Mm. So yeah, and the common languages, of course, Arabic. Again, religion, theology, mm. Persian official court. And literature, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and this time it evol evolves to old Anatolian Turkish. Mm -hmm. mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This is the spoken language, and uh, the spoken language is pure, like most of them, like eighty or ninety percent, like Turkic mm. origin words. Yeah. The uh, like nobles were used. Noble nobles used Arabic and Persian, mm. mm -hmm. and of course Byzantine Greek. Because of the Byzantine Empire, yeah. Mm. So, and yeah, of, and uh, I want to talk about uh, another piece of work, the Codex Cumanicus. Mm. This is uh, a piece of um, another branch, uh, as you would remember. May I show it like this, like I showed you here? Yeah. Uh, just a second. Yeah, this is like uh, we talked about Karluk Turkic, mm -hmm. uh, Kahanit, uh, Karahanit, like the the Vanilugatu Turk were written in Karluk Turkic. Mm. Okay. And yeah. uh, the Selçuk Empire, the Anatolian Selçuk Empire, were, was was Turkic. Yeah. Mm. Both, and now we were going to talk about Kıpçak Turkic. Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. 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 Mm. I thought. That might be better to explain. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, great. Sorry. Definitely. Yeah. Again, the Codex Cumanicus. You know, the cum Cuman. It means uh, it's a it's a tribe actually, Turkic tribe, Cuman. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually the uh, yeah Cuman. They lived in uh, like north north of the Black Sea. Mm. So, okay. Yeah. The Codex Cumanicus is a linguistic manual of the Middle Ages designed to help Catholic missionaries to communicate with the Cumans and nomadic mm -hmm. Turkic people. Codex was created in Crimea and is considered one of the oldest monuments of the Crimean Tatar language, which is of great importance for the history of Kıpçak and Oguz mm -hmm. languages. And mm -hmm. this Kıpçak language was uh, mostly affected by Oguz languages. Mm -hmm. And this is mm -hmm. a piece of Codex Cumanicus. Mm. Yeah. That's a dove. <laughs> I, said, uh, I think it's a parrot. Oh, yeah. That's a parrot. Yeah, that's a parrot. <laughs> okay. oh. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And we come back to August Turks again. Mm -hmm. There's another book, uh, the book of Dede Korkut. This is uh, like there are many epics of August Turks. Mm. Uh, these are written by an anonymous writer. We don't know. Who has written this and there are two copies of them one of them is in germany in dresden one of them mm -hmm. is in vatican mm. so like the book of dede korkut or book of korkutata this is another name of dede korkut it's it's in uh, like it's a it's a grandfather image like with um, like white beard his voice and he mm. tells the story actually like this is the epic stories of the august turks Mm. Yes. Yeah, these stories carry morals and values significant to the social lifestyle of the nomadic Turkic peoples and their pre-Islamic beliefs. Mm. So Dede Korkut is a heroic destan epic. We call it in Turkish destan. Mm. Yeah, okay. also known as Oğuz Name. Mm. Yeah. And yeah, there's a passage in this <laughs> and this is a translation. Cool. Mm. Yeah. Actually, I can understand a bit, although it was written in uh, 14th and between 15th century, like Allah, Allah, you move, Ursa, Kara, Dalar, Yihar. That's understandable for me. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's, that's really mm. interesting. Yeah. Because mm. comparatively, I think that all the English is barely understandable. Like, yeah. uh, like 
countryman uh like what was it uh beowulf is like very the yeah. Yeah, yeah so, well, so but, yeah like the comparison is uh, also to um, interesting yeah. i think it's the beowulf is more closely <laughs> to danish than english yeah yeah <laughs> i think so yeah <laughs> yeah yeah this is a piece of writing mm. so this is the dresden version mm. And uh, just a second, may I turn on turn on the light? Yeah, sure. Is it getting dark already? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And yeah. Cool. And now we come to the Ottoman Empire. Yeah. 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 This is the greatest extent of Ottoman Empire. So. You can guess that there were many languages are, were spoken at that mm. time by the minorities. So the languages of the Ottoman Empire, like the language of the court and government of the Ottoman Empire was Ottoman Turkish. Mm -hmm. But many other languages were in contemporary use in the parts of the empire. Of course, like it was spread a huge area. So mm. like although the minorities of the Ottoman Empire were free to use their language among themselves if they needed to communicate with the government they had to use ottoman turkish mm -hmm. like ottoman mm -hmm. turkish was lingua franca at that time yeah yeah, yeah. and ottoman turkish um like uh, they had mixture of both arabic and persian grammar and vocabulary mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they were like highly affected by arabic and persian they even used their like uh, grammar in mm -hmm. in uh, ottoman turkish so, for instance, yeah, this is uh, this is the area of a triangle. Actually, this is a famous um, example in Turkey. Like, okay. <laughs> when they talk about Ottoman Turkish, they say like they give this example. Mm. So, uh, this one is Ottoman Turkish. This is the modern Turkish, mm. and it's full of like Arabic and Persian words. And look at this, and this is not found in Turkish. Mm. It's, it's like off uh, in English. Like mm. besides, they connect one another, but we don't use such thing. We use like uchgenin, like the genitive version of uh -huh. in Turkish. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Cases. Mm, I see. Yeah. Yeah, this one is much more understandable to me than this one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Arabic and Persian, yeah. Arabic and Persian, as these were the main foreign languages in the pre-Tanzimat era. Um, mm. Tanzimat is a like is a, a decree of Sultan, which was like proclaimed by Abdul Majid I uh, in 1839. Um, mm. He proclaimed that he gives rights to minorities, like he will, they will never uh, going to do their military service. Mm -hmm. And he gives basically more rights than before. So, and this plays a great role because after that, they started to use the language French. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. The Ottoman and Divan poetry is very uh, mm -hmm. important because um, they use many Arabic scripts and they use Arabic and Persian words making the language vastly different from modern Turkish. Mm -hmm. And in its own time, knowledge of this form of literature Turkish was largely limited to the educated classes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I see. Uh, the educated classes only can understand and write in Divan poetry. They mm -hmm. write Kassides, um, Gazelles, Mesnevis. Mm -hmm. these, these are the, like, um, the kinds of the poetry in Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. But the people, they spoke pure Turkish, actually, like mm -hmm. Yunus Emre, like they, they were like uh, these people, so mm -hmm. and French mm -hmm. and French became more prominent during and after the Tanzimat era, yeah. and after 1839. The westernization increased and since at the time it was a major language of the philosophical and diplomatic fields along with the sciences mm -hmm. because it was lingua franca at that time. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it was, yes, was actually uh, quite... Uh, yeah, if I told you, for example, we saw some documents about um, yeah. diplomatic documents between Bulgaria and Japan, and they were written in French. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, very... Yeah. That's so interesting, yeah. And yeah. it was a small common language of European origin among all the people with the high levels of education, even though yeah. none of the native ethnic groups in the empire used French as their native language. Mm. So, yeah. It's uh, yeah. it's interesting because, yeah. oh, sorry to cut you off. It's, it's, uh, it's very interesting because like, at first my gut reaction was like, oh yeah, it makes sense. We, we were alike for a time. I think the Kingdom of France and the Ottoman Empire, I, my history lessons are very moldy but yeah. i know we were uh, we were alive at some uh, at some point and we also yeah some, like uh, yeah. like in 16th century or something like that yeah against, yeah. against the Karl V, like mm -hmm. the the empire of the the roman german empire i don't know what was the yeah. name the mm -hmm. holy roman empire yeah the holy roman empire yes um mm -hmm. you were allies like mm -hmm. Uh, Suleiman the first were allied with friends. They fight mm -hmm. against Karl V. Yeah, so, that's it. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it. That's at that time, at the time, there were no like um, connection. I mean, in terms of languages, mm. they were at that time highly, um, highly affected by Persian and Arabic. After mm. uh, Tanzimat, you know, and after yeah. Tanzimat, they started to like uh, absorb the French language. I don't know. <laughs> they it was like um yeah there's an example yeah that, i guess yeah it was the exactly. linga foreign crowd that time and that's super interesting <laughs> yeah. actually like, it goes against my own bias so it's cool yeah it was a noise <laughs> yeah. english one yeah. yeah yeah and there, there's a, there's a piece of work which mm. was written in like after tanzimat era so mm. uh we can basically translate it as the love of cars uh mm. there is a character uh, Biruz Bey. Uh, who is the son of Pasha, and he's a, he's actually like a high. He belongs to high class because uh, Pasha means like like a bureaucracy of uh, Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. So um, he speaks French all the time mm -hmm. at the time mm -hmm. to use French words between Turkish sentences because it seems more elegant mm -hmm. at the time. Mm -hmm. And he speaks French to barbers, waiters, tailors, and shoemakers. We we read it in high school, so oh. yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is there like a bit of irony? Like I suppose they didn't understand him <laughs> when he would use French. Yeah. No, but but actually, there, like the, actually, we use those words today. Those French mm -hmm. words. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like like the like um, how to say. Uh, I forgot the word, like mm. canapé, uh, I don't know, mm. étagère, étagère. Mm. Mm. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like the things that, furnitures, yeah, the furnitures mm -hmm. for it. Yeah, furnitures. Yeah. Mm, very interesting, yeah. Yeah, we, we did too, yeah, some, yeah. some of them. Yeah. Mm. So you did say canapé, étagère, well, canapé, and I, I think uh, bide comes directly from Turkish though. W which word? Uh, it's not a, it's not a furniture, it's a bide, like it's, uh, the, only, the, only, the only, unfortunately, maybe. it's the only thing I can think of, like, uh, like to wash, like in the in the bathroom. We we're still very fond of bide, uh, and I had the the notion that it was Turkish, but bide, you see, bide. you say bide. No, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's not Turkish. Maybe it's not. I'm very okay. Yeah, well, it sounds Turkish to me too, but yeah. maybe it's not. Yeah, it's some. Um, uh i'm pretty sure though that uh, it was some french people after like must mm -hmm. have been like late the middle ages i hope i'm not uh, i didn't research mm -hmm. it enough but it's basically okay. we used like some uh some uh, washing techniques and we ended up like coming okay. up with uh, yeah, yeah it might be yeah mm -hmm. yeah but i'm not i'm not sure mm -hmm. yeah. okay okay um, I'll, I'll yeah Cool. <laughs> Sorry <Okay>. about that. <laughs> no, no problem. Yeah. yeah. After the Ottoman Empire, we come to modern Turkish Republic. Mm -hmm. Like, mm. um, and we revolutionized the letters, actually. Mm -hmm. We used the Arabic alphabet all the time, but uh, it wasn't uh, appropriate for the Turkish language mm -hmm. because it has three uh, short vowels and three long vowels. Mm -hmm. But okay. we have, we, we have eight, vowels in Turkish language. 
and not mm. and they're not expressed well in Arabic letters. So it has to change. So yeah. like the Ottoman alphabet was based on the Arabic alphabet. Also, we got some Persian letters because mm. in Arabic language they don't have in Arabic alphabet they don't have P, Ch, uh, J, yeah. and we got those letters from Persian alphabet. So mm. it was a mixture actually, uh -huh. like and which was replaced in. 1928 by the new Latin based Turkish alphabet. And the 29 letter Turkish alphabet was established as a personal initiative of the founder of the Turkish Republic, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And the resulting Latin alphabet was designed to reflect the actual sounds of spoken Turkish rather than simply transcribing the old Ottoman script into a new form. Yeah. Starting 1st December 1928, newspapers, magazines, subtitles and movies, advertisement and signs had to be written with the letters of the new alph alphabet. And today, it's also forbidden to broadcast something in old alphabet. Today, it's yeah. forbidden. Okay. You cannot do that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. You're going to be punished if you do that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in academic, for academic purposes, you can do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. This is the Ottoman alphabet, actually. We can say yeah. Ottoman alphabet based on Arabic alphabet. And you see, we have here like pe, not found in uh, <laughs> Arabic alphabet, chim, so, and yeah. Mm, I see. And this is the modern Turkish alphabet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have 29 letters, you see. Okay. Can you tell us how, how you pronounce the ones that are not identical to, let's say, English or mm -hmm. French? Of course. Yeah. A, B, J, mm -hmm. Ç, mm -hmm. D, E, F, G, Yumuşak G, Mm -hmm. He, I, E, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, E, P, R, S, Ş, T, U, U, V, Y, Z. Mm, thanks. Uh, very interesting. So uh, you're using the umlaut, like in uh, yeah. yeah. It makes me think of it. Yeah, the <laughs> use it the in alphabet. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm. In alphabet, but we don't have a umlaut. A. Mm. We don't have that sound because. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Mm, I see. Yeah. yeah, and here this is the Atatürk introducing the new Turkish alphabet to people of Kayseri, mm. like, and. This was the uh, revolution of the letters. And here we have the language reform. This is the revolution of the language. Mm -hmm. And uh, what is a language reform actually? Language reform is a kind of language planning by widespread change to a language. The typical methods of language reform are simplification and linguistic purism. Simplification regulari regularizes vocabulary, grammar, and spelling. Yes, we did so. The loan words of Persian Arabic origin were dropped in favor of native Turkish words or new coinage based on Turkic, Turkic roots. I think they it harmed the language because mm -hmm. like we have many words that, that are being used by centuries, so we cannot just throw them away mm -hmm. so easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's always criticized. It's really cr criticized all the time. Like the revolution of letters was, was necessary because. We couldn't express the sounds, but uh, they always ask, ask that is the language reform was really necessary. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, Atatürk um, established an institution in order to make the language reform come true. Like the institution was established on 12th July 1932 under the name Türk, Türk Dili Tetkik Cemiyeti, Society for Research on Turkish Language, mm -hmm. by the initiative of Atatürk. And they tried to provide the Turkish language. They wanted to throw the like Arabic and Persian words and produce new ones mm. uh, based on Turkic roots. Mm. 
and yeah. And this is the origin of the words in Turkish vocabulary today. Mm. Like you see Arabic and after Arabic, French, mm -hmm. Brazil, Italian, English, Greek, English because of the technology. Yeah. Like yeah. In the last century, we have the others like Latin, Russian, Spanish, Armenian. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the sun language theory. Yeah, that, that's an interesting theory, Güneştil theory. The sun language theory was a Turkish national list linguistic uh, hypothesis developed in Turkey in the 1930s that proposed that all hum human languages are descendants of the one proto-Turkic primal language. Mm -hmm. And the founder and the first president of the Turkish Republic, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, not only gave the theory official backing and material support, but also was himself a very important contributor to mm -hmm. this development. After his death, uh, this theory was uh, discredited by all mm -hmm. the academics. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 yeah, I guess okay. it's yeah. very yeah. ambitious. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was, uh, yeah. Mm. but he did many things. Um, yeah. He changed the alphabet. Yeah, he, he made mm. many th beneficial things actually. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, mm. We couldn't be like using this uh, Latin alphabet today because mm -hmm. it's really hard to convert from uh, an alphabet from another mm -hmm. in these centuries. So yeah. like that, and at and, the end, yeah, no it, it prize have helped with the uh, research as well, like finding old uh, like roots, like the roots of words. It's always useful, I guess. Like, uh, yes, yes, definitely, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is the last point of our literature. Ah, it's uh, uh, or, uh, Orkan Pamuk. Yes, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I like him. Yeah. He's a very good writer. <laughs> yeah, he's a very good writer. He mm. won the Nobel Prize in literature mm. in 2006. Yeah. Does Pamuk mean cotton in Turkish too? Yeah. Because in Bulgarian yeah. it does. Yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> That's curious. Mm. And yeah, we focused on the literature part. And now we mm -hmm. can focus on the language part. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Turkic languages are the sub branch of the Altaic language theory. They say like there were a language which is called Altaic language like thousands of years ago. And the Turkic language like Mongolic and Tunguzic, Japonic, Koranic languages are the descendants of this language. Mm -hmm. So there's a, like, it's really surprising that I found this word. Uh, you know, there's a word, shashi. It means mm -hmm. crossed eye. In <laughs> Japanese, it means also crossed eye, shashi. Wow. Mm. Okay. They share some archaic words. Mm. Uh -huh. Yeah. But most of the time, it's still debated. And most of the academics also discredit this theory. Mm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And this is the distribution of the Altaic languages. And these are Turkic languages here and there. These Mongolic languages, these Korean, Koreanic languages and Japanic languages. Mm. And this is, I think, the Tunguizic languages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, basically the Turkic languages. These are the Oguz branch. Mm -hmm. And this is, I think, the uh, Chuwash language. Ogur, mm -hmm. and these were the Siberian ones, Saha Yakut Turkcesi, mm -hmm. and the Kyrgyz Kazakh, this is the Uyghur, and this is Turkmen. Mm -hmm. mm. And yeah, if we come back to classification of the Turkic languages, you see uh, there are six branches, but mainly two branches, like assume like hands, like two hands, like mm -hmm. one hand. Ogur Turkic, the other mm. hand is common Shas Turkic. Mm. And Ogur Turkic only represented today by Chuwash language. The others are dead. Mm -hmm. And mm. the other Turkic, like August Turkic, Karluk Turkic, Kupchak Turkic, Siberian Turkic, and Argo Turkic. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I see. Yeah. And we talked about Ogur Turkic before. Yeah. Mm. And these are the, uh, like, the languages of Bulgars and Khazars. Uh, some scholars considered Hunic a similar language, 
but today we cannot find any evidence because there is no written thing. Okay. Uh, yeah. And yeah, the northeastern Siberian Turkic, uh, it's a sub branch of Turkic languages, mm -hmm. and they are spoken in this area. These are the names of the languages. So they are spoken like Yakut, Tuvan, Altai, Chun, Pota, Akas. Yeah, mm. like that. And Northwestern Kipchak Turkic. You know, mm. these are the, uh, like the directions are very important. This is Northeast. Mm. Mm. And here we, this is Northeast. Here we come Northwest. Yeah. And the Kipchak, Kipchak languages are sub branch of the Turkic language family spoken by approximately 28 million people in much of Central Asia, Eastern Europe, and span mm. from Ukraine to China. Some of the most widely spoken languages in this group are Kazakh, Kyrgyz, and Tatar, mm. like in this area. This is like Kazakhs, the Kyrgyz, mm. the Crimeans here, even in Turkey. Mm -hmm. mm. I see. So like some local dialects would be uh, yeah, directly influenced by all the... Yeah, yeah. because the, yeah, they were really close to each other. Mm. And the southeastern, the Karluk Turkic, the Karluk languages are a sub branch of Turkic language, and um, and once spoken by Karluks, many Middle Turkic works were in these languages, like I showed you Divani Lugatu Turk, Atabetul Hakayik, Kutat Gubilik, Ivan Hikmet were written in this Turkic language, mm -hmm. like. Their descendants are like Uzbeks and the Uyghurs today. Mm. And this is the most biggest one. This is the biggest one. The Southeastern August Turkic. August languages are a sub branch of Turkic language family spoken by approximately 108 million people. And three languages with the largest number of speakers are Turkish, Azerbaijan, and Turkmen. Mm. And you know, Karahanit scholar Mahmoud al Kashkari, who lived in the 11th century, stated that Oghuz language was the simplest among all the Turkic languages. Mm. He wrote in Karluk Turkic, but he also mentioned about the Oghuz Turkic. Mm. Uh -huh. So, yeah, like uh, the like it's deemed like the easiest, uh, like the, the kind of the easiest way to communicate would have been with the uh, with, uh, uh, Oghuz, right? right? Is that? Yeah, they, they yeah. actually. Uh, they are classified actually under one identity, Turks. Mm. Like there are many tribes, but they are Turks, basically. Yeah. Mm. They may speak uh, different languages, but I don't know if it's correct to say languages, because in school we were taught like dialects, actually. Mm. Uh -huh. mm. There are two main dialects of Turkish language they told us, like Yakut Turkish and Chuash Turkish, and the others were the sub-dialects of them. Mm. And they were told like this, but I think this makes much more sense to me than the other theory that was taught in school. Mm -hmm. mm. So yeah. this is the distribution of August Turks today, like in Turkey, mm -hmm. in Azerbaijan and Iran, and the Turkmen's. It's spoken in Cyprus, uh, Greece, Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. Romania, the others, uh, they mean like Gagavus Turkish, like mm -hmm. they're very similar to modern Turkish, Azerbaijani, mm -hmm. like that. And also we know that these Turkic uh, states uh, in Middle Asia, they were highly like uh, affected by the Soviet Russia. So yes. their writing system and I think their alphabets were, were changed. So, um, uh, I I think they're right they're right in Cyrillic. I hope I'm not uh, yeah. I'm not wrong, but yeah, I think, I think uh, yeah. Kazakhstan tries to change it, tries to convert it into Latin mm -hmm. alphabet, but the others, mm -hmm. I think they're they're writing in Cyrillic alphabet. Yeah, uh, I'm certain for Kazakhstan. For yeah, for Kazakhstan, I don't know about the other countries, but yeah, like Kazakhstan, I'm sure they they're right in Cyrillic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. and. If you want to check, the, we, can, we can turn back to this later because there was a big table that shows mm. the whole vocabulary of 
those Turkic languages. Mm. It's really fascinating. I want so, to show you. We can turn back to later after the finishing. All right. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. And the features of the Turkish languages, language. Yeah. Mm. We know it's agglutinated. It means mm. that the words, the suffixes actually come together and forms a new uh, word or a mm. sentence. Mm. And There are no articles like in French, in German, mm. le, la, de, di, das. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't know. Doesn't exist. Yeah. We have default SOV order. It means like subject, object, verb. Oh, but, okay. you can, but you can put the verb anywhere you want. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's flexible. But, mm. Yeah, it's flexible, like Latin, yeah. I guess. In Latin, uh -huh. you can change the word order too. Yeah. And we have vowel harmony. Mm -hmm. And we have question suffix, like in Korean and in Japanese. Like in Japanese, oh. we, there is ka. Ka, yeah. Ka. In Turkish, yeah. it's mu, 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 like that. Mm. And yeah, agglutinated language. For instance, like göz means eye. Gözlük mm -hmm. means eyeglasses. Gözlükçü means optician. Mm. And gözlükçülük mm. means optician straight. Wow. Mm. <laughs> Great okay. new words are just adding suffixes. Mm -hmm. and all, in Turkish, we only add suffixes. We, we don't have prefixes or uh -huh. infixes. Mm. Okay. Ah, okay. So the beginning is always the root. Mm. Okay. Yeah, the beginning is the root. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And, it, and also we can um, make tenses with that. For instance, oh. yap. Yap means do. Mm. Yap ma means don't do. Ma is like negative suffix. Mm. Mm. Yaptım. It means I did. T uh, gives the past tense. Okay. And, and M means I. Huh. Mm. Okay. But it's a suffix. And yapıyorum, yap, do, diyor. It means like the tense. I am doing, doing, mm. ing. And um means I am. It indicates mm. that I do. Like the first mm. pronoun. Yapabilirim. Mm. Yup, again, do. Abilmek, abilmek indicates uh, ability, like can. Im means, again, I. Here. Mm -hmm. Yapabilirdim. I could have done. Like, it gives the past ver version of it. Mm -hmm. Abilmek, abilmek means can. Yapabilirdim, I could have done. Mm. Well. Yeah. Yapamayabilirdim. I might, I might not have Done. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a bit mm. confusing, but yeah. Mm. And no articles, as I said. Like you say, Araba. Araba means car. Car. Mm. We don't have the car. Daddy does <laughs> car. Lola car. No. Yeah. Car. yeah. Mm. F means home or house. Mm. Unesh means son. Mm. Chojuk means child. Mm -hmm. Adam means man, mm -hmm. Kadın mm. means woman, and Bebek means baby. Uh -huh. mm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And SOV word order. Yeah. For instance, Yusuf El Mayi Yedi, Joseph, the apple ate. Mm -hmm. Basic sentence order. But the translation is Joseph ate the apple. Like, mm. like, all the, like all the other Turkish languages, Turkish has flexibility in word orders. So any order is possible. But this is the default one. Mm. Yeah. The, right. other, the other ones are used in uh, poems, in literary pieces. Mm. Generally. Mm -hmm. Inverted sentences, we call them. Yeah. <laughs> Can you even say something like, the apple Joseph ate? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. El Sufi <laughs> did. Okay. The apple Joseph ate. Yeah, yeah, similar. Yeah. Yedi elmayı Yusuf. Elmayı Yusuf yedi. It changed actually the intonation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And here's the word order. And <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. yeah. 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 How possible <laughs> parts mm -hmm. of a sentence. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> And vowel harmony, it's a bit complicated, so uh, I try to keep it a bit simple. And, okay. 
Turkish has two classes of vowels, front and back. Like uh, you see in examples, Turkey, we have only like, I think front vowels, we call it different in Turkish, like ince uh, ünlüler, ü, i, e, it means mm -hmm. front vowels. Therefore, we say de, mm -hmm. Türkiye de in Turkey. Uh, de means in. Mm. Okay. But uh, in Germany, Almanya, a, 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 mm. and uh -huh. therefore we say da, Almanya da. Okay. Mm. Instead of Almanya de, because it it sounds diff it sounds weird. We so mm -hmm. we say therefore mm. Almanya da. Yeah. Mm. It's vowel harmony. Mm, I see. Oh, wow. yeah, interesting. Yeah. And the question suffix. For instance, uh, this is a book. Bu bir kitap. Mm -hmm. And you change the word order and it becomes a question sentence in English. But basically we add the question suffix at the end and then we got the question. Bu bir kitap mı? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Question. Yeah. This is my house. Bu benim evim. Is this your house? Bu senin mm -hmm. evin mi? Mm. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm. We, we add again question suffix me. It changes, uh, um, like it follows the rule of vowel harmony, like a, uh, mm. e, e. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> and the conjugation of the verbs. Yeah. Um. You see, these are the tenses, and these are the conjugations uh, to the personal pronouns, like mm -hmm. gelirim. It mm -hmm. means I come. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, gelirsin, you come. Gelir, he, she, it comes. Mm -hmm. Geliriz, we come. Gelirsiniz, you come. Mm -hmm. And gelirler, they come. And these mm -hmm. are like these suffixes indicate tense, simple present tense, and im sin, no suffix, is sin is ler indicates the personal pronouns. Okay. Yeah, so no suffix, it's always like the third person of the like, yeah, thing. In like, third yeah. person, we don't have suffix. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like the others we have. Mm. And this is like and we have also personal pronouns, actually. Like, mm. this is personal suffix, and also we have personal pronouns. Mm -hmm. But mm. we mostly omit personal pronouns because mm -hmm. it gives the same meaning. Like, yazıyorum, ben yeah. yazıyorum, Pretty means the specific. same. Mm. But, but it uh, emphasizes, actually, the, um, the verb. Because mm -hmm. I say ben yazıyorum, it means I do it. Mm. Ben yazıyorum. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This is the verb okay. root, yazmak means right, mm. your present continuous, and um personal suffix. And the noun cases, we have six noun cases, mm. like, mm. like absolute, unmarked, yalın hal, mm. accusative, like genitive, mm. dative, locative, and ablative. For mm. instance, el means hand, mm -hmm. eli. When I just indicate the hand, I say mm -hmm. Eli. Mm -hmm. Like genitive, like Elin, like the fingers, for instance, like the hand of the fingers, like mm -hmm. Elin parmakları. Mm -hmm. Like dative Ele, like from somewhere to hand. Mm -hmm. Locative Elde, like on, on the hand or something mm -hmm. like that. Like ablative Elden, like from hand to somewhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like we can, yeah. Like in Kö, like Kö mm -hmm. means village. Mm -hmm. Like um, in locative Kö in village. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then dative mm -hmm. it means to village, like from somewhere to village. If you go from somewhere to village, you use dative. But if you leave the village because you're in village, mm -hmm. you use ablative form Kö then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you're going from one village to another village, it will be something like And the personal pronouns like Ben, 
Mm-hmm. Then, O, we don't have he, she, it. We have only mm-hmm. O. Yeah. Okay. Because mm-hmm. we don't have non genders either. So, mm-hmm. yeah. it. and biz means we, cis mm-hmm. means you, mm-hmm. and also mm-hmm. it's like a respectful one. Uh, if you yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Something I wish I. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And mm. onlar means they. Mm. Mm. And this is the accusative and dative locative ablative form. We add suffixes only. And this is the uh, possessive pronouns, actually, the genitive mm. forms, mm-hmm. like my, your, mm. his, her, it's our, your, and their. Mm-hmm. See? Yeah, mm. and the longest words. <laughs> cool. Turkish <laughs> language. Yeah, I like these words. Mm. Like I can't read it. No. <laughs> yeah, it's really hard mm. to like. I think three years ago, uh, mm. I made a video about it. Mm. Uh, it was really interesting to me. So, <laughs> you want yeah. me to pronounce it? Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, do. yeah, yeah please <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to try as hard as I can. Muvafakiyetsizleştirici so. <clears throat> leştiri verebilemeyeceklerimizden misinizcesine. It contains 70 letters, mm. and it means as though you're from you're from those whom we may not be able to easily make into a maker of unsuccessful ones. <laughs> mm. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I suppose you don't use it every day, though. <laughs> we don't use it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As, uh... <laughs> and the turkologist that mm. I really benefited from, mm-hmm. uh, uh, for instance, Jean Paul Roux mm. is a French yeah. turkologist. Yeah, I mm. read his one of his books about Turkish Turkic tribes. Mm. They're really um, beneficial. Uh, William Radlov, uh, I think he prepared a Turkic uh, dictionaries. Mm-hmm. So, if you want to check out, like you can look at him. And Lars Johansi, I mentioned about his uh, classification today. It was his mm-hmm. classification, his taxonomy. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Ahmed Bijan Ercilasun, that was mm-hmm. uh, a Turkish Turkologist, and I, I also benefited from him too. Mm-hmm. Um, Peter, Peter Benjamin Golden. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andreas Titze, he's a very famous Turkologist. Mm. And uh, Geoffrey Lewis, uh, he's a, he has a book uh, on the revolution of the letters, like the mm. catastrophic mm. success. So if somebody like is curious about it, mm. they can check yeah. it. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that, yeah. that was, uh, well, that was yeah. a great presentation. Great, Thank amazing. You. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah you're welcome. And we can check the vocabulary list before we go. Mm-hmm. I'm uh, kind of curious to, to which which extent, like the like you mentioned in uh, like uh, I know that several pay, uh, that's pay, several countries in um, that's like uh, Kazakhstan, uh, yeah. Uzbekistan, like the different yeah. countries that were sort of uh, encased in the Soviet Union. Did that yeah. have an impact on the language or not so much? Yes, yes. For mm. instance, uh, in Azerbaijan language, mm. you know, it's a, uh, August Turkic, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, we have many common words, but they have incredibly amount of Russian words in their mm-hmm. language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but their writing system was not that that uh, that much changed, like when you compare to the others, like the Oz- mm-hmm. Uzbek one and the Turkmen one, the Kazakh mm-hmm. one, Kyrgyz ones. They, yeah. It was l- literally changed from base to top. Like mm-hmm. even they say um, they spoiled the harmony of the language. Mm-hmm. I see, yeah. So it had an influence, but I know that yeah, okay. there is some um, some resentment. Like at least in Bulgaria, I could feel it. Like uh, people felt uh, some uh, some older people felt bad that they they had to learn Russian, and so it could be yeah 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 yeah. 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 They they learn actually like it's a mm. it's the sec- second common language in Middle Middle Asia. 
Mm. If you go to Kyrgyzstan or Kazakhstan, if you speak Russian, you can communicate with them easily. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. And also what was going to say? Yeah. Uh, There was a like Soviet policy. Mm -hmm. Like they say uh, they have to like separate those tribes from one another. They have to. So change the language Mm -hmm. and the letters so that Uh they cannot communicate with one another. So mm. it's easy to um, like assimilate them. Mm. So yeah, see. Mm. and yeah, this is the whole like the table of Turkic languages. Actually, well, yeah, mm. very good. I think mm. we can yeah. compare them. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And what is this like? Father and sister, Ata, mm. An. We, we use it Ata today, like Ata Turk. Mm. Yeah. 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 Okay. And you see Baba, Ata. Baba means mm. father. And Ata means actually like the ancestor. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And in Azerbaijani, they use today Baba, Ata. Mm. And Karahani, they use also Apa, Ata. Mm. Like Kashgai in Iran, they use Ata. Turkmen, Ata. Tatar, Ata. Bashkir, mm. Kazakh, Ata, Ata. Ota, Ata. And you go... And Chuvash Ate, you know, like this is the first one that got separated from the Turkic branch. So it's mm. quite uh-huh. normal that it's so different than the others. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And interestingly, we have Anne means mother, like the same in modern Turkish mm-hmm. with Chuvash. Mm-hmm. And Ol means son. Yeah. Mm. Okay. And we have like men, er, erkek, like er, kek. Mm. We share the same. And we have like body parts, like heart, yurek. Like we use mostly kalp, the Arabic one. Mm. But also we understand yurek too. Sometimes we use it. Mm. And like ear. They are almost the same, like the body parts you see. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like the goes, goes, goes. Mm. See? And mm. animals. Like cat, oh, yeah. neck. Mm. And like that do- dog, eat, mm. kapek, eat, 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 eat. Mm. Yeah. And water, like su. So, so, so. I think that's the Chinese word. So, uh, well, yeah, because yeah, in Japanese, when they use the Chinese pronunciation of like of the kanji symbol, it's sui is water, definitely. Mm-hmm. There's miso, but there's sui as well, mm-hmm. the, coming yeah, from Chinese. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, and God, tengri. Mm-hmm. And in Turkish, we use tanri. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's tanri, tengri. And and it goes and goes and numbers yeah mm-hmm. numbers are mm-hmm. so alike like bir iki üç dört beş altı yedi sekiz dokuz on mm-hmm. üç dört beş altı yedi sekiz dokuz on mm-hmm. like it goes they're almost the same so mm-hmm. I don't know it's correct to call them like separate languages or dialects I don't know mm-hmm. I'm not a yeah. linguist yet but mm-hmm. western point of view says that they are separate languages but the mm. Turkish point of view, they say, no, they're not separate languages. Mm. They're just like the mm. French one language. Yeah. Mm, I see. Well, that's when the um, kind of like the uh, like the nas- national uh, like perspective uh, has an impact. Yeah. Like, for example, I know that uh, all the um, kind of Occitan, like uh, all the Provencal sort of yeah. like Southern, like Italian languages are very similar. They can be understood, but uh, like... Yeah. Uh, France, Italy, and Spain, like, rather see them, like, get separated, <laughs> so, yeah, because, like, it creates a national identity of a sort of, like, a local identity, very strong, but it's yes. not seen as something, like, really concrete, uh, like, uh, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, mm, it's interesting to see, yeah. Yeah, uh, these are mm. the numbers, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, um... 
and uh, obviously Turkish must have influenced like uh, like to some extent like other like other languages I suppose like neighbor yes, neighboring like, mm. mostly the Balkan languages were like uh, influenced by Turkish language the Ottoman mm. Turkish we yeah. we they have many loan words from Turkish I think in Serbian in Greek mm. like most of the time we like fight over meals like mm. Jajik, uh, Jajiki, yeah. mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and uh, in Serbian we have many words I think like mm. Yastuk or something like that like mm. Yastuk means pillow uh-huh. mm. and uh, yeah we influenced them mostly but um, the Ottoman Empire has no policy to like uh, like teach their language teach the Ottoman Turkey so uh, we had little impact actually mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. maybe the... things that were like modern at the time mm-hmm. or something vocabulary yeah, that, that didn't exist yeah. before mm. and uh, after the colonial era they started to speak the like French English like mm. the other yeah. European languages mm. I see Well, that was super interesting. Do you, do you have like uh, some question of your own? I <laughs> kept talking. <laughs> I wanted to ask you about the variety of tenses because I was researching yeah. something not long ago and it said about Turkish that it has tenses that are based on evidentiality. Like, did you yeah. see the thing or yeah, yeah, you have this? Yeah, yeah. we have these uh, on just uh, like the past tense. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have two past tenses, like the one with the ev- evidentiality, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like the one with this, if you see it, you use uh, the suffix the, mm-hmm. or uh, it changes like um, according to the uh, consonants, like t, for okay. instance, mm-hmm. yaptım, but the original suffix is actually the, but it changes mm-hmm. because of okay. p, yeah, mm-hmm. because yeah. of p, yeah. Mm-hmm. And we say yapmış, we don't actually see, but we heard it. Mm-hmm. That's what's called ev- yeah. evidentiality, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So interesting. So your, your, system, your grammar system works the uh, same way. Like, so, uh, some elements, yeah. yeah some particularly, elements. I heard about this one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have only five tenses, I guess. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Like present continuous tense, mm-hmm. like the two past tenses, as I said. Mm-hmm. And uh, like future tense, what else? And, and uh, like simple, simple present tense, oh, like the mm, daily okay. things. Yeah, mm. pretty compact. Yeah. Yes. We have only five tenses, but we have a combination of tenses actually. Mm-hmm. Like, mm. as I showed here, like, what was that? Mm. You see the uh, progressive past. Yeah. I yeah. was going to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not one of the main, but uh, this is like uh, we use it every day. Like I was going to, yeah, yeah. Past, like uh, tense. Yeah. All right. Okay. Great. Mm. Yeah. Well, that was super, uh, like, uh, super instructive. I yeah. think I'll go through the like the video once it's once up. Once again, definitely. <laughs> so it's really, it's really interesting. Like. Uh, Especially Thank like um, I know like if you have any further questions, uh, please yeah. ask them. I think we've asked them. So yeah, think, we? yeah, we did <laughs> along the way. Yeah, thank yeah. you. It was extremely yeah. detailed. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I'm yeah. really glad that you liked it. Yeah, mm. yeah, very enriching. And uh, yeah, well, if you have anything like you'd like to say or <laughs> to add, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. I don't know. Um, I would like to be a linguist now. I don't know. Uh-huh. After, mm. um, after learning all those things, um, mm. I, I'm studying right now law. But yeah. I, yeah. I figured out that law is not my thing. I mm. think mm. Language, language is the thing that I'm passionately going to do in mm. my future. So I would like to study linguistics in Germany, maybe later in the United States. I don't know. No, like, great. You know, yeah. you know Noam Chomsky? You know them? Sure, yeah. yes, yes. Yeah, yeah he, he's a great linguist. Like, he's my one of my idols, one of my idols. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah. Well, that's great. Like, really, we hope you're... <laughs> your yeah, we wish gonna, you all yeah. the best. And we hope you yes. keep this enthusiasm because sometimes when it becomes uh, your work... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know, it's really hard to keep 
the languages that you've learned so far fresh and alive because mm. yeah i cannot even find somebody to practice english with so mm. that's really that's really yeah. bad yeah mm. Yes, yeah. well, yes, us too, yeah. we are checking what opportunities the internet can give yeah. us, especially now that yeah. we're more or less confined at home and yeah. you know, discovering new things like this passion project, yeah. learning about different languages. Yeah, I was quite surprised actually, somebody like noticed my YouTube channel, I thought nobody's mm -hmm. watching, so mm -hmm. I, I gave up, like I said, no, nobody's watching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, right. So, a note to the viewers, please subscribe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Subscribe to channel. Channel. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, yeah. We'll I'm, put a, a little note in the um, description box, yeah. link to okay. your channel. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> you're, yeah. welcome. you're welcome. <laughs> thank you're you very welcome. much for joining us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, um, okay. well, Shall we call it quit? Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay, well, the, that was great again, and uh, thank you, yeah. thank you again for like. Uh, yeah, you're setups. welcome. And uh, yeah. yeah, thank yeah. you so much. All the best. <laughs> Having this all meeting with for the future. Yeah, thank you so much. I wish all my best for you too. <laughs> thank great. You. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. bye.